2022. And essentially, the breakdown of that would be the PNR in the Luzon system, the Metro Manila lines, the Visayas lines, which would largely be comprised of yung sa Cebu po natin, and of course, the Mindanao Railway. Next slide, please. Just for a quick breakdown, ma'am, and this is also how we uh, how we classify our job. Meron po kami dun sa pinakakaya na column yung tinatawag po namin ongoing development or yung mga pinag-aaralan na proyekto. Second column po ma'am from the right are those that are already ongoing detail design as well as those as well as those na ongoing bidding po. And yun naman pong third column from the right or second column from the left, yun naman po yung mga under construction already in different stages. And ma'am, yung 77 kilometers po nating sinasabi na operational railway is nandun po sa pinakakaliwa. Now, MRT3 is one of our four operating lines with 16.9 kilometers. And ito po yung context niyan. Next slide, please. Currently, ma'am, in Metro Manila, we have lines 1, 2, and 3 operating, and we have PNR operating as well, although a very offering a very limited service. On this slide, ma'am, nakalatag lahat po ng proyekto natin for Metro Manila. Yung dotted lines po are the ones that are in different stages of implementation. So that just gives us a context po ng railway program at railway projects and Department of Transportation. Now, next slide, we go to MRT3. Uh, just three quick topics po for us to brief, uh, Madam Senator. Uh, we have a couple of slides up po on the current situation, another two slides on the way forward, and a fifth slide po on the bus augmentation program na naririnig na rin po siguro natin na inumpisahan nat namin noong Pebrero a uno. Next slide, please. Ma'am, yung current situation po natin ngayon, uh, we characterize uh, with three main thematic uh, areas. Una po ma'am, maintenance in the last eight years or seven years has been difficult because we had a series of short-term service providers. Uh, actually ma'am, kahit nung nandiyan pa po si Sumitomo noong 2010 to 2012, technically speaking po, those are four six-month extended contracts. Now, why do we highlight this ma'am? Because when you have short-term contracts po na didisincentivize po yung service provider natin from making the necessary investments to properly maintain the system. So those are investments in people, in spare parts, and in their own equipment. But they were paid 54 million a month? Our most recent po ma'am was paid 54 million a month. Even at six months? Okay. Yes ma'am. Now, uh, another uh, consequence po of the short-term structure is it's incentivizes po yung tinatawag namin na running to the ground practices. Na ilalabas mo nga po halimbawa yung trend, pero alam mo po na dalawa o tatlong taon ka lang dun sa sistema, at the end of the contract period, very last po yung tinatawag natin na handover condition requirement ng system. Halimbawa po, ang nakalagay lang dapat yung condition ng system, same level of spare parts, wala po siyang mga requirements at handover that would incentivize na patakbuhin ng maayos yung sistema. So running to the ground po, running to the ground po yung tinatawag namin dyan. Mano yung pangalawang item po sa maintenance ay yung paggamit po ng recondition at mga hindi po OEM, yung original equipment manufacturer na spare parts. Isa ma'am dun sa mga nakita po namin sa MRT3, halimbawa na lang po sa signaling, meron po tayong ibang mga critical components ng signaling tulad po ng ATP sensor natin as well as yung mga ATP modules po natin na hindi na OEM. Uh, now ma'am, yung system po kasi natin uh, unfortunately is a proprietary system by Bombardier and we have uh, had discussions po with them and there are some concerns with using po sig uh, critical components of the signaling na hindi po galing sa kanila at hindi po nila certify. So that is one issue po. Uh, traction motors din po natin ma'am have uh, some of our traction components instead of being replaced are just reconditioned. 
So again po, that would have some impact on reliability. Siguro maaari po na pagkatapos mong mapalitan ng recondition na piyesa ay tatakbo po siya, pero not as reliable as it would have been had we replaced them with new spare parts. Third item po ma'am under maintenance is yung early track deterioration. Um, usually po, track, railway track when properly maintained can reach a lifespan of 100 years. Ma'am, wala pa pong 20 years yung mga realist natin and we already have to replace all of them. In fact, ma'am, uh, one third, actually less than one fourth of them have been replaced in 2016, 7,000 linear kilometers. Ngayon po ma'am, nakaprograma tayong palitan lahat except for yung 7,000 linear kilometers kasi sira po talaga. Bakit? Ma'am, uh, it's a function po of maintenance. Uh, there's a regular uh, cycle of uh, grinding. There's a regular cycle of fixing your wheels. So would you say that um, we started having these problems um, when we removed Sumitomo initially in 2020? 2012 ba? Uh, ma'am, we couldn't exactly pinpoint po uh, well, kung kailan na sa, but ma'am, it's in a really deteriorated state. How long will it take for you to, to replace all of those? Two rooms? years, ma'am. Two years. Okay. Two years po because our rehabilitation assumption is that we will keep the line running. Meaning okay. po ma'am, we only have a window during our non-revenue hours at night when we can do this replacement. So, yun po ma'am yung three uh, key items that uh, we wish to highlight po on the maintenance aspect. Ma'am, yung pangalawa pong major uh, bullet is yung underinvestment natin in renewals and upgrades. Uh, we always compare ma'am a railway system to a car. Para pong kotse na dapat pinapa-tune up mo, pinapa-change oil mo every 1,000 or 5,000 kilometers, yung mga components po na kahit na anong sistema ng reles ay meron din pong regular uh, upgrade or overhaul cycle. I'll just give two examples, ma'am, which are actually two of uh, our biggest issues. Yung mga bagwan po natin are by design supposed to be overhauled every eight years. Yung first round po na overhaul noong 2007 to 2009 was completed by Sumitomo and their partner Mitsubishi Heavy. Kung bibilangin po natin yung walong taon mula po noong 2008, June na po dapat ang overhaul natin itong 2016, late na rin po yung 2017. Now, Part po ng kontrata ng previous natin na maintenance service provider ay yung pag-overhaul po ng 43 out of our 72 LRVs. As of November 2017, when we took over, uh, base na rin po doon sa general overhaul schedule that was uh, provided by them, dapat naka-26 na po sila, tatlo lang po yung natapos. So, yun po yung sa 43 na mga bagwan out of 72. Doon naman po sa 29 kasi uh, hindi ko po alam kung bakit hindi na lang nila lahat sa isang kontrata. But, meron pong balancing 29 na mga bagwan na ang plan naman po dapat is ang mag-overhaul is separate uh, contract. And unfortunately, ma'am, meron pong consultant na kinuha ang MRT3 back then na hindi po natapos yung pag-prepare ng terms of reference and ng budget for the 29 na mga bagon. Uh, hindi po kasi madali gumawa ng terms of reference para po sa mga bagon kasi each uh, bagon po iba yung problema. So, masinsinan po yung prosesong kinakailangan para po talaga ma-define kung ano yung extent of overhaul na kinakailangan. So, hindi rin po na-overhaul yung 29. So, overdue na po talaga yung buong fleet natin for overhaul. Yung sa signaling naman po, that is usually upgraded every 10 to 15 years following international best practice, Kung bibilangin po natin yan mula nung nag-umpisa tayong tumakbo noong taong 2000, dapat po by 2015 ay napalitan na rin po natin yan. And finally po ma'am, yung tinatawag namin na fragmentation dun sa pamamaraan kung paano natin itinayo, ini-operate, minimaintain yung ating reles, very fragmented po talaga. Uh, for example, ma'am, uh, yung tinatawag po na yung claim of ownership po ni MRTC, 
tayo po ay nagbabayad ng renta, kasalukuyan po, $12 million per month. So, nagbabayad po tayo ng $12 million per month as rental para po doon sa MRT3. Operations po ma'am, ang nag-handle po ay tayo through DOTR MRT3. Ang uh, kaya lang yung kasunduan na yan with uh, MRT Siva? Yes ma'am, 2025 po. Ma'am, magsistep up pa po siya ng 12.5 million by next year. Uh, okay. Operations po ma'am, uh, average po since 2014, ang uh, budget po natin dyan ay 1.0 billion pesos every year. So, kung mapapansin niyo po ma'am sa budget, uh, tatlong linya po dyan ang nakaukol sa MRT3. Una po yung tinatawag nating subsidy, yun po yung binabayad sa... Pagkaring subsidy? Yun po ma'am, $12 million per month. Okay. Yun po yung renta. Okay. Yung pangalawang linya naman po natin sa budget na nakaukol po sa MRT3, yun po yung tinatawag natin na operations and maintenance for MRT3 na Mag line item. Year, point, Average po ma'am, $1.8 billion from GAA 2014 to 2017. Okay. In 2018 po, nasa $1.7 billion. Pagkatapos okay. po ma'am, yung rehabilitation and capacity expansion naman po, ito yung pangatlong linya natin sa GAA from 2014 po to 2017, that's a total of 6.3 billion pesos. Uh, this covers po so many different contracts. Um, I think po the count is at 20 or 30 different uh, rehab and capex contracts. So iba-ibang kontrata, iba-ibang uh, iba contractor, iba-ibang supplier. So ito po yung tinatawag namin na uh, very fragmented way that we have uh, operated, maintained, uh, to a certain extent tried to rehabilitate the system in the last few years. Okay, so uh, just to recap, 1.8 average billion per year for maintenance and operation, about $12 million per month on subsidy alone, which yes. is the biggest yes, part of the budget, and $6.3 billion uh, for the rehabilitation of about 20, which involves 20 to 30 contracts. Tama po, ma'am. Bakit? Ba tayo nag-ganitong klase yung ano? Ganito ba talaga? Uh, Ma'am, mahirap po pag ganito. At uh, siguro okay. po ma'am, nakikita na po natin yung uh, consequence po nung ganitong klasing approach uh, dahil hindi lang po magkatugma halimbawa yung isang uh, kontrata in terms of implementation, madelay yung isang kontrata, mag-fail yung bid sa isa, wala na po yung buong programa. So, yun po yung isa sa difficulties natin. Ma'am, by the way po, wala pa po dun yung 4.5 billion para dun sa bagong mga bagon. Kasi kasama po yun sa CAPEX. Sa... Sabihin mo, bigyan mo ako ng isang example ng 6.3 billion. Ano dun? Like, uh, what are, give me an example of the 20 or 30 contracts. Kanino? Okay, okay ma'am. Ganito po. Ah, ma'am, actually, we shared po a copy of all of the rehab contracts since 2014. Pakibigay na. Okay, so halimbawa po ma'am, 50 million for the elevators and escalators, that's a separate contract. Uh, the road rail vehicle is a separate contract, 55 million, rail grinding. Yun lang siguro okay lang kasi supply lang yun eh. Uh, halimbawa ma'am, yung repair natin ng wheel lathe machine is a 520 million. Sige, sige. Okay na, I, I just wanted to, to get an idea what it is. All right, um, let's go back to... The main questions here, because if we can answer this, uh, I don't know. Sa mga spare parts, yung mga main spare parts that are vital to the proper and timely operations of the trains, have those parts arrived? Uh, Ma'am, we'll forward to slide 8, please. Previous slide lang. Okay. Previous. Previous, okay. So, Ma'am, uh, Not all. Not all spare parts have arrived, ma'am, to answer po the question. I'll, uh, I'll hand over, ma'am, to our Director for Operations in a bit, but I will just give a broad uh, intro po on this. Uh, since we took over po, ma'am, last November 6 of uh, 2017, we established a special bids and awards committee for the fast-track procurement of the spare parts that we need to gradually restore po yung mga trend. As of December uh, 29 of 2017, we have completed po the procurement of our first batch 
of spare parts. The delivery lead time po for that first batch is 30 days to 6 months. Uh, we have already submitted also po yung aging ng delivery schedule natin. And uh, nagkumpisa na po yung dumating ngayong February. Uh, sa kasalukuyan po ma'am, uh, today we have on average 7 running trains. Ang uh, projection po namin is so long as wala pong mag-down na additional train uh, for the rest of February, we will have spare parts arriving that would allow us to bring the number of trains back to 10 ngayon pong end of February. Uh, Ma'am, our Director for Operations will expound a little more. Pero, pero okay, hmm. normally, on peak hours, we need what, 13? Ma'am, 20, 20 po. Uh, so, so, so ngayon, 10 pa lang tayo, uh, we're hoping, yes. by, by Feb, yes. right? By the, end, by the end of Feb or? By the end of February, ma'am. Okay, and then? And then, uh, we would, la ang target po natin, ma'am, is to get back to 15 after po the, four the three and a half days uh, shutdown that we do pagka uh, Holy Week po. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. Ma'am, there are ano po, uh, three major classifications po siguro uh, ng spare parts that we have been procuring uh, to date. Uh, una po is yung first batch na tinatawag namin, which is really a varied, uh, iba-ibang klase pong spare parts. We have also already submitted po a list of all of those. Yung pangalawa po, uh, which is uh, major, is yung related po sa signaling natin. Uh, one of our top three causes po for failure incidents are signaling related. Last July 2017, we invited our OEM signaling supplier, Bombardier, to do po a system audit on MRT3. Based on their system audit, uh, there were two major uh, conclusions. Number one, yung nasabi ko nga po kanina na meron pong mga components ang signaling system natin na hindi na po OEM. Yung iba po meron pang modifications na hindi po nila maintindihan kung paano po ginawa. And number two, we really need to stock up on spare parts for signaling and there's a lot of signaling subcomponents that needs restoration. So noong January si uh, February 6 po ma'am, we already signed uh, an agreement with Bombardier they will come back with two contracts. Contract number one po would be a restock of all of the OEM signaling spare parts that we need. And contract number two po would be a maintenance contract. Uh, it's not just a maintenance, a restoration. They will restore our signaling to a more reliable state. When will, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Yusek. When will the signaling system arrive from Bombardier? Ma'am, the spare parts po will... Um, Request mo nila is seven weeks sa kontrata. Pero ma'am, we ask them po na as the spare parts become available, paki-deliver na. Kasi ma'am, meron pong spare parts, signaling lang po, meron spare, signaling spare parts na available off the shelf in some uh, warehouse of Bombardier somewhere around the world. Meron pong signaling spare parts na hindi, uh, actually ma'am, nag-favor na lang kami, ipupun out po nila from committed orders. So, they have to work on that po. Kasi ma'am, yung iba po nilang kliyente, hindi naman, I mean, mapapakiusapan naman daw po. Kasi hindi ganun ka-urgent yung... Oh, kasi may stock sila siguro. <laughs> hindi tulad na. Tayo, what? Hindi tulad natin, ma'am. Mm -hmm. And yung pangat... Ano yung signaling system? I'm just curious. For, for a full signaling system, ah, not just components of it or parts of it. Uh, ma'am, one figure that we've seen in the, yun pong rehab works natin, umaabot po siya ng 400 million US dollars. Just for the upgrade. For one signaling system? Yes, ma'am. How many do you need? Ay, ma'am, that's the entire system po. For everything, ma'am. 400 million dollars? Yes, ma'am. Ilan yun sa billion pesos? Four times... 50. Ay, sorry, sorry. No, 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 no. no, no. 400 million pesos. 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 Kaya pa yun. Mm -mm, yes. Pero ano lang. Mm -mm. Pero kaya lang matatapos natin itong signaling system upgrade. Uh, Ma'am, uh, seven weeks. 
Hindi ma'am, delivery pa lang po yun. Delivery pa, po, delivery pa lang po yun. Umpisa pa lang po actually ng delivery ng spare parts. Seven weeks po yung request nila for everything. Tapos po, uh, once the spare parts start coming in, so yun po yung nilang kontrata, uh, supply of spare parts. Yung pangalawa po nilang kontrata is yung restoration and maintenance po. So, ang hinihingi po nila is six months to bring the reliability back up. So, we're talking for seven Seven weeks or less, yes. but to totally six months. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, dun muna tayo. Tatanayin, I'll get my checklist out of the way. Then we, we can go back to if you have anything else to add. So, the spare parts have arrived, but in increments. Um, meron na isang Facebook na tawa ko kasi. Ang pinakita ng parts, yung mga dumating na pang maintenance, yung WD-40. Hindi naman siguro. Hindi ba may dumadating na pong bearings at mga axle opinions po? Hindi naman yun. Pag mga gano'n, huwag naman ninyo pakunan na ng litrato yun. Okay. Tayo lang natatawa na dito eh, kasi parang it's the hopelessness of the situation sometimes, no? Okay. So, spare parts and somitomo. Somitomo. Ano nang sabi ng somitomo? Yes, nililigawan niyo pa rin kasi inayawan ninyo noon eh. So, scorned yan eh. So, ngayon, did they agree to finally be our maintenance provider? Ma'am, uh, with the help of the government in Japan and a lot of uh, efforts to negotiate at a diplomatic level by the Secretary, uh, Japan po is already helping us. Uh, last January 9, po, we already exchanged note verbals uh, between the govern between the two governments. The system audit by JICA engineers is ongoing. Nagumpisa po yan noong February 1, and 150 engineers po are coming in and out of the MRT3 to assess everything po that we need to fully restore the system to its uh, design capacity. Mm -hmm. You suck. I, we need visuals, no? I mean, you have you saying 150 engineers. Are they mostly Japanese, Filipinos? Uh, combined po, ma'am, mostly Filipinos. Dapat, ah, mostly. Yes, ma'am. Galing dito sa Pilipinas? Yes, ma'am. Meron pala tayo, pero Japan pa is the one getting them. How come? Ma'am, um, if you would recall, ma'am, nung nandito po si Sumitomo for the first 12 years, they also had their own team. So uh, where are those really engineers really. now deployed? If they were here the whole time, why didn't we get them before? Ma'am, good question. Kung saan saan lang sila. I'm okay, you need to take pictures and show us. Sige po, ma'am. Na ma yung mga engineer ninyo. Napansin po namin yung number kasi they submitted a request for passes. Nung una po, we were expecting only 50 engineers. That was the initial discussion. But when they submitted their request for passes to the system, 150 po yung nakalistang mo. Wow. Okay, now, with Sumitomo, uh, just for the record, they haven't, it's just a note verbal for now. Yes, by their government. They're doing an audit at which time after they come up with um, an analysis of the situation, will they actually commit? When are they giving themselves? March deal? 15, ma'am. Huh? March 15 is the deadline for them to submit their audit report. For uh, the system audit po will uh, finish by March 15. After we know what needs to be done, then we are going to go to the next step. Po. We are going to negotiate and finalize the terms of the official development assistance and the appointment process for the service provider. And the ODA? ODA po to ma'am. So government to government? Yes, ma'am. Okay. The All Japanese right. government has so, their goodwill and track record at stake in restoring MIT. Okay, so realistically, if we receive the systems audit from Sumitomo March 15, we're looking at by April, uh, you will probably have a, an idea when you will be signing finally an agreement with Sumitomo. All right, next question. Dalian trains. You had your test this morning. Yes. Um, for what purpose is this? Diba sinabi nga mabigat, tapos yung, yung ating uh, pre-list na medyo may pro problemado na, uh, ano ba tawag dito, uh, you risked running those trains there? O, oh, paano yun? Ma'am, the uh, testing, uh, yung pagpatakbo po ng Dalian, actually yesterday po ma'am and today, and uh, baka po a few more times in the next few days, are uh, part po 
of the audit and assessment being done by TUV Rhineland on the Dalian trains. So part po, uh, kasi ma'am, actually in TUV Rhineland po ang coverage nila is not just the Dalian trains, it's the entire MRT3 system. So they just really have to go through all of the motions, all of the steps, all of the checklists para po talaga comprehensive yung audit assessment report that they will issue. Okay. Um, when will they come up with their analysis or their conclusions? Ma'am, the TUV Rhineland contract has a three-month period. They started po last January 3, and they should be done po by the end of March. Yung sa Dalian trains po, nag-request kami sa kanila, although meron po kasi silang strict audit procedures na sinusunod, but we requested if pwede pong mauna sana. Uh, so we're, we're, ano po, we're working on that. Okay. Yeah, but, but you've already been testing those trains, right? Okay, here's my question. Umpisa pa lang, mabigat na yun. Okay. Common sense naman for Rhineland, di ba? Why are you even going to risk trying those already considered to be overweight trains on our tracks that supposedly cannot accommodate that weight? Why? Why did we allow them to do that? Ma'am, part po of what they're looking at are the computations uh, behind the overweight issue. Hindi ba pwedeng bago mo ipatong sa rail, e timbangin mo muna? Or it is over na to. Mr. Baka, are you in the private sector? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay, what's your analysis on this? Um, first of all, we're, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. We're, I'm Roel Bakar of CBNT. We're not presently... Uh, we do not have any contracts with government. We used, to, right? we, uh, we used to have a contract, but we're here as resource. So we are here to explain uh, on the weight issue of the Dalian trains, as we know of. We, um, we made comparison with the manuals of the previous trains because we are familiar with the, with the trains before. And maybe my colleague here, Mr. Ralph Pierre, can explain on the weight um, <coughs> issues of the Dalian trains. Uh, sir. Excuse me lang ha, para ano, why were the topic? Okay, about the weight issue. Uh, the description of the Department of Transportation for two Dalian says, does this train has to have an axle weight of 8.5 to 10 tons. <coughs> also not exceeding 10 tons. So I do not know where the terms comes from. Does the Dalian should be too heavy? I have never seen any weight from the Dalian. Under the terms of reference. But is this true? What is the weight of the Dalian train when you received it? Ma'am, at AW0 condition, it's at 49 tons. Uh, that means uh, the unladen or yung wala pong laman na uh, weight. Dry 49 weight. tons? 49 tons. Eh, so, 30 tons <coughs> overweight? Ah, ma'am, ang, ay ma'am, that's okay. the weight of the entire train. I think po, what's that's the, the empty weight? Yes, that's the empty weight of empty the entire weight. train. That's uh, what Miss. What our resource person is referring to, to is the axle weight. No. The axle weight is part of it. But this is the things what I was looking for, what you mentioned now. The 49 tons total weight. Okay? Now, when you divide these 49 tons by eight axles, then you get the axle load for the empty car. So we are far away from an overloaded car. Then the car is still empty. Um, <coughs> let, let me go back, OK? Uh, I, I need to, to clarify this. I think Wait. I have. Wait. Give me some time. Um, can, can you tell me what, what you have here? Because I have here. OK, sandali, ah. Hmm. Dami na kasing notes eh, kung ilan yung na, over, na overweight dito eh. What, what, what information do you have? Madam Chair, ma'am, uh, our, okay, 
based on our terms of reference, mm -hmm. the AW0 or the dry weight has to be 46.3 tons. Based on the delivered weight, it is 49.7 tons. Right. The contract requires 46.3 kilogram weight per coach. Per coach. Okay. That's what the contract Empty stipulates. Coach. Empty coach, Empty yes, sir. Coach. Of course, we, we can't really determine like how heavy <coughs> these people will be, just an average, no? Um, the 48 delivered coaches are 49.6 kilograms each already. So you have about um, 3,000 kilograms in overweight. That's um, correct. That's now we have where it comes from. But this is not a termination or a definition of overweight of a loaded train concerning the tracks he's running on it. Okay. So you're saying, sir, that it will also depend on the capacity of the train. Correct. Right. But then you'd always want to assume full capacity at the maximum. I have it here. Okay. The weight is declared from the Department of Transportation to <laughs> Dalian. And there, the requesting 394 passenger per vehicle. That means, <laughs> wait, wait. No, that means the requesting a load capacity of eight people per square meter by 65 kilo of weight. Can you people please imagine how you put eight people? 65 kilos in one square meter. Have, have you ridden in one of our trains lately? <laughs> I mean, okay, I would okay. rather err on the side of uh, being cautious about this and, and to have, like, cram as many people. Correct. I mean, in Japan, you actually kick these people inside so they can fit. So Correct. Okay. There we are. We right. With these numbers, we exactly by these kicking procedures in Japan. Right, right. We exactly there. Now, when we go to the weight of this, 394 times 65, that is 25 tons and 600 kilo. When we adding this up now, with this 49.6 tons from the empty vehicle, then we get 75.2 tons. Okay? okay when so we're dividing I now, 75.2 tons by axle, then we are way within the limit as required from the DOTR for the axle load for the truck. We're coming to an axle load of only 9.4 tons, and okay. the truck system is designed for 10 tons. So where is the problem for overload? Can you explain this to us? Uh in terms of what, he, what he's saying now, that when you, this is from, uh, I understand this from the layman's point of view, okay? That if you consider the passengers and all the other things, then it will still fall within the limits that are provided for our tracks. Is that what you're, is that what you're, what he's saying, Mr. Hoxon? You, you were nodding, so you agreed with him. Explain to me why you agree. Uh, and what is your position in the MRT, sir? I'm with uh, GM Garcia, ma'am. You are with who? Uh, I'm in As with what? Are you an engineer, a lawyer? No, no. Uh, I'm the head executive assistant of GM Garcia. Okay, sir. Um, maybe somebody with the expertise to be able to understand. Because my, my point is, okay, maybe in the end, they will be compliant with all of these things put together. But the point is, they've already violated one provision of the contract. That in itself, whether it is filled with people or not, that was the requirement for each coach on the train, correct? So they've already violated that. I don't know why we are wasting time with this having to run it still, as sinabi nga niya, putput na yung marilas natin, patakbo pa tayo ng patakbo. But I know, I, I, oh, I've also heard in informal talks that if we want to file a case against them, we just have to follow the protocols uh, and, and deal with um, Rhineland. 
Okay. We ran them. Is that the reason why we're humoring them? We what are waiting is? for their independent assessment of uh, train spam and part of it uh, could be towards that end. Okay. Well, anyway, this is... Um, how about um, uh, Engineer Santiago, what's your opinion on this? Mabigat na yung train, hindi, wala pang tao, pero sinasabi nito, sinasabi nitong uh, technical consultant, if you consider the number of people that can uh, humanly possible fit in that the train, we can still fall within the required weight um, uh, standard. Do you agree with that? If the contract says already this is... I think the, the consultant was repairing, trans transferring the total uh, train weight into the weight, into the pores on the wheels, so that's why he calculated the number of axle load. And he was saying, in effect, if I understood it correctly, based on the load on the wheels on the axle it's not overweight is that correct, correct. but yeah. based on the specs of the otr on the entire uh, train or every car it exceeds the specifications okay no no sir I, no i i understand uh, what you're trying to clarify we appreciate it also this point of view on the other hand um the important thing for me, eh, and for most of us here, is number one, we, sh we find a solution to our problem now, and we need to be able to use those trains soon. Number two, that the passengers are safe. And number three, that the government is not shortchanged. Okay. Um, having said those, I think that, because uh, we're just going to test, test, tapos biglang Pagkatapos niyan, wala din naman na de delay pa lalo. Alam mo, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Ha? After they fail those tests, we will have to order again. After litigating, okay, so simultaneously litigating and then ordering a new batch of trains. If they say, no, 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 we can do something about it. Let's say Ryland decides, uh, no, we can do something about it. We, we still have to be able to, and I heard this also informally, do something about it to kosha. I'm not an engineer, pero may gagawin tayo dyan para, para makayanan yung mga ano na yan. So, another point of delay. Uh, so, right now, what we're saying is, Rhineland will come up with their decision uh, by... When? Um, by the end of March for the entire system, but we are um, pushing to get uh, their even preliminary evaluation on just the Dalian trains by the end of this month. Okay, here's my question. Let's say they say, okay, Dalian, okay, Dalian uh, can work on those tracks and you're not going to be in any danger. So we'll accept it, right? How long will it take for us to be able to use those? How many and when? Uh, Ma'am, my understanding is uh, we can, assuming, assuming, ma'am, uh, we don't want to preempt uh, the audit, uh, but assuming that it can be cleared without condition, because it's one thing to be cleared without condition and to be cleared without condition. If they clear it without condition, then we can use them right away. Right away, it's on double big lano, and the Okay, I'd like to acknowledge and thank uh, Senator uh, Angara. Thank you. Finally, uh, legal na tong hearing na tong All right. Um, so balita na kami because that will that will make a remark difference if finally we can utilize those trains. I mean, I am not praying for the failure of these trains. In fact, I'm one of the ones who would want to see it uh, utilized, but of course not at the expense of the safety of our passengers, and I, I would agree. Now, we will go to the, um, I guess, uh, the crux of the matter, the, the important part here, the update on the ombudsman case. Okay, dito na siguro papasok yung bayan, or did you want to add something to the discussions earlier? Ano po, um, may idadagdag din po kami, although I uh, would like to put on record that uh, Bawang, Tren, uh, different commuter groups filed the uh, case, complaint before the Office of the Ombudsman last November, at um, hinihintay na po namin, dalang understanding namin after 
uh, the submission ng uh, reply namin, it's now uh, submitted for resolution. So, uh, hopefully in the coming months, magkaroon na po ng linaw yung uh, kinab kinabutan po nung kaso. Ano ba yung kaso ninyo ng November? Ano yung ano, graph? Plan graph, graph po yung sa amin, tsaka yung sa procurement laws. So, sino yung mga kinasuhan niya doon? Uh, ang kasama ko sa mga respondents doon ay sina Secretary Abawa, uh, ilang mga opisyal ng uh, DOTC nung panahon niya, at kasama po yung buri. Okay. Um, pero, yeah, anything to add? Pero dahil sure. lang po, ma'am, kasi uh, I, uh, I've been listening to the DOT, uh, no? uh, batid po siguro ng komite na kaninang umawa, may mga pasahero na naman ng MRT na naglakad sa Riles, no And this was happening even before 7 a.m. Bago magpala 7 ng umawa, may mga commuters na naglalakad sa Riles ng MRT. At hanggang ngayon po, sa tinatak po ng hearing, wala po tayong narinig na pag ng responsibilidad mula sa DOTR. Wala pong paumanhin, paghingi ng paumanhin sa mga commuters. Walang pag-ako ng responsibilidad. Kasi po ang maintenance po ng MRT ngayon ay DOTR na eh. Hindi na po nila pwede ituro ang buri kasi tinerminate na po nila yung kontrata. Ngayon, para din po sa kapatiran ng komite, uh, ang DOTR po pumatok sa ilang negotiated procurements bago matapos ang taong 2017. December 29, 7.3 million spare parts per track. December 29, 8.6 million for rolling stock. December 29, 1.98 million for bearings. December 29, 2.8 million bags spare parts. December 27, 6.4 million bags spare parts. December 19, 45.3 million independent audit yung binabanggit po kanina. Ito po, ako na po ng gobyerno ito, pero ang taong bago po yung ginagamit para sa mga negotiated procurements na ito. At syempre, ang mga commuters at taxpayers gusto makakita ng resulta kung sa anong nangyayari sa ating pera. O, pero alam niyo, Mr. Reyes, syempre December yan, no? Yes, ma'am. Kaya medyo nalit. Ito po, no? kahapon po, yung market, tumirik po yung uh, trend, binablame nila electrical failure. October 7, 2016, uh, the DOTR, Secretary of the Guard, awarded a contract worth 827 million for the upgrade of ancillary systems. So, medyo mahapang pa ng 827 million uh, project work ng kontrata para ang yung electrical system. Ano yung binigay yan? Uh, Nandun po sa, sa website po nila. So, so natanggap na yan? That to upgrade the electrical system? Uh, that, was two, that was 2016. According to okay. the report of uh, the MRT, binigay po sa Asia Phil. Nasa website naman po nila. So, kung bago, may kapatapatahan na wala nang yung inawal ng kontrata ito para din po makakita ng resulta na hindi na po pumapalpa yung electrical system ng MRT3 pero hindi po natin yun narinig uh, mula sa report ng uh, DOTR. Negotiated procurement din ba ito? Negotiated contract yung sa Asia Phil? Nilidot po nila yung uh, sa Asia Phil. Oh. Okay. Siguro po, magandang magkaroon din ng update pa matapos yung awarding ng kontrata, implementation nito, kung bakit patuloy pa hong nakakaranas ng electrical failures yung ating trend. Oo nga. Hmm. Di ba itong Asia Phil, yan din yung contractor ng Clark Development Corporation? Oo. So, kakilala na ni, ni Secretary Tugadi yan. Uh, yung panahon na yan. Malamang po. Uh, May mga nagbid ba o isa lang? Uh, ang nakita po namin kasi sa records ng MRT Nag-grant na. na Yung uh, nag-grant na yung rebid uh, Para dun sa ancillary services B Bukot po doon sa mga inaward na At yung mga tinatanong natin kung paano nagamit yung pera ng bayan Ang isa kong tanong din namin uh, Paano ba talaga gumagana yung maintenance transition team? Who is on top of it? Uh, sino ho yung dapat na nanagot tuwing merong pumapalya? Hindi po kasi malinaw kanina doon sa ulap. Ang information namin, marami po dyan, ay dati rin pong mga engineers at technicians ng Busan. They brought in senior engineers from LRTA at the start, pero binalik din nila sa LRTA. Sino po ang uh, nangunguna at responsable doon sa maintenance transition team? Pangalawa po, sa question of leadership, no? ano po ang nagiging papel ng DOTR Secretary Every time mayroong tumitirik na trend. Uh, our information is that for the entire year of 2017, the DOTR Secretary did not visit the MRT3 depot. 
hindi hands-on na tumitingin doon sa kalabas ng ating mga tren. Sino to? Si Secretary? Secretary Tugwade. Hindi niya pinupuntahan? For the entire year of 2017, our re so, uh, the report... So, incognito daw siya eh. Ano ba? Nakakap daw. Oh. Okay. Uh, ang, ang hinihingi po dito sana yung hands-on nilang ano eh, pagtugon dun sa problema. Dahil nga araw-araw po tumitirik ko yung tren eh. So, kinakilangan po siguro dito mula sa Secretary, meron ng pagtingin. Nasaan din po ang uh, MRT3 General Manager uh, tuwing may agarya. No, hindi po din natin siya naririnig masyado at nakikita, nagpapaliwanag ng kalabayan ng uh, train system natin sa araw-araw na nagkakaroon din ng abenta. Sino ang general manager? Garcia, di ba? Yes, ma'am. Nakakaintindi ba siya? <laughs> yes, naman po. Sinabi niya, okay yung dalian okay. train, di ba? Hindi, pero ito yung, ito yung sinasabi natin. May punto rin si Mr. Reyes dito. Kailangan natin yung marunong ng mga technical na aspeto nitong mga pinapatakbo natin kasi kung puro magaling ka nga sa isang bagay pero hindi naman yan ang dapat mong pagkukulan ng pansin, eh paano mo, paano magiging uh, uh, maayos ang pagpapatakbo ng, ng train na nga natin? Um, teka muna sir, actually yung busan kasi... Um, Marami pang ibang issue dito ba? Ah, Bago meron lang, meron lang, may kli lang pong ah, karagdagan lang po. No? Uh, kanina po kasi nabanggit yung equity rental payments. Uh, may get $12 million kada taon. Mm -hmm. uh, we would like to know, officially, anong stand ng uh, DOTR kaugnay ng equity rental payments na yon. Tingin nyo ba yun ay labis-labis, it is unjust. Uh, was this born out of uh, an owner's contract na hindi na ho nararapat? Kasi, kung tingin nyo may problema, yung sobrang laking binabayad natin, eh dapat merong gawing hakbang. Karagdagan po at huwag na noon, ang, ang kontrata po supposedly ay matatapos na nga sa 2025. No? So, seven years na lang po itong kontratang ito sa MRT3 at iba, ibibigay na sa gobyerno yung pagkakas ng relief, lahat ng istruktura dyan, to turn over na po yan sa gobyerno based sa terms ng BRT. Ang tanong din po namin, ano pong ginagawa ang paghanda ng gobyerno sa ganong eventuality? Kasi matatapin po yung kontrate. So, ibibigay na po sa gobyerno everything, you know? Mga poste, mga relays, lahat po yan. So, pag nasa gobyerno na yan, anong gagawin po natin dyan? Hindi mo ba natin dapat ginagawaan yan? Ngayon pa lang, para tapos tayo ng long-term uh, plan at proposal, kung anong gagawin ng gobyerno, pag nasa atin na ang pag-aari ng trend. Yeah. Tama ka rin doon. Di ba meron ng proposal ng Metro Pacific? na i-take over the privatize na yan. They will assume all of the liabilities if I'm correct. But of course, they'll be subject to regulation also that they can't hike. Um, I think this is something that we, we should ser seriously also look into. But before that, I think, um, sorry, uh, kasi magsastart na kami. Um, Pangako ko sa ating mga kababayan, dahil kayo ay nag-file na ng kaso sa ombudsman. ba? Diba? December lang ninyo pin... Uh, na-file, kaya hindi masyado napansin ng taong bayan ano yung mga finile ninyo. Pakisabi, ano ba yung finile ninyo at sino ang mga uh, mga respondents doon? Okay. Ma'am, yung na-file po na kaso ay both for plunder and violation of our anti-graph and corrupt practices act. Ang uh, mga respondents po natin doon, ma'am, uh, from the former DOTC, si Secretary Junabaya, Yusek Lopez, Yusek Lemcalco, Yusek Gonzalez, GM Buenafe, Afrika Alcaraz, the relevant members po of the back, um, officers and stockholders of Buri, and members po of the GPPB. Yun po yung mga respondents sa mga kaso na yun. Uh, status po, ma'am, uh, the different respondents have filed their counter action. Ano ba? Parang kulang pa. Meron ka pang iba, di ba? Uh, ma'am, sa GPPB po marami. Mar Rojas, Secretary Abad, Purisima, Petilia. Anong GPPB? The Government Procurement ah, Board po, ma'am. Okay. Um, so, marami sila. Yes, ma'am. Pero yung problema, di ba, may mga chismis na hindi sila nag ng board meeting. Mm -hmm. Pero sasabihin, ipirma mo na lang ako. Yun ba ay paramount na dapat ikaw ay managot rin? Ma'am, um, I hope you don't mind if I limit my comments okay, on okay. that case. No, so that's fine. <laughs> so, all of them, 
um, not just one particular group, are plunder ang kaso, hindi lamang graft. Okay. Anong status ngayon, kasama ba dyan yung buri? Yes, ma'am. Kasama, okay. Anong status ngayon sa ombudsman? Ma'am, um, nag-file na po ng counter-affidavits yung mga respondents and ang uh, gagawin po ng legal department ng DOTR is to file a consolidated na reply po doon sa mga counter-affidavits na yun. So when will, when will you be able to, well, hopefully if the ombudsman decides that the case will uh, prosper, when are you looking at um, this, when, what is the timeline for this case to actually be heard? Ma'am, I'm sorry po. <laughs> Wala po kasi yung bonus kami. Hindi, tayo dito. Baka may tanong sa... Within their uh, oh. commandments, the ombudsman will set the hearings, uh, Madam Chair, no? Madam Chair, may you can ask a few questions? Yeah, yes, of course. Can we ask, um, uh, what is the subsidy, the total subsidy for 2017 for the MRT3 and for the whole uh, MRT-LRT system? Uh, uh, sir, for 2017... Uh, looking po at the three MRT3 sub-items. Sir, hold on pa. I'll just quickly... Ano. I just a ballpark figure. Like 2016, magkano ang ginastos ng taong bayan para uh, patakbuhin yung MRT at para isubsidize yung ticket ng ating mga kababayan? Sir, para po doon sa operations, meron po tayong 1.5 billion pesos. Okay. Para po doon sa subsidy, yung renta po natin, 4.8 billion pesos. Maybe just one figure for operations and uh, how much is for the ticket subsidy? Uh, sir, it would be this combined. Tatlong line items po kasi ang MRT3 okay. sa budget. Uh, unang line item po ay yung equity rental payments natin, which was 4.8. 4.8 billion pesos in 2017. Mm -hmm. Yun pong uh, operational budget po natin, which is 1.5 billion pesos in 2017. And yung pangatlo po is yung tinatawag natin na uh, rehabilitation and capacity expansion, which is 1 billion pesos naman po in 2017. Saan nanggagaling yung sinasubsidize sa kada? What's the cost of a ticket? Uh, the actual uh, cost, uh, not the what, what the commuter pays. Uh, sir, uh, we range po from 15 to 29. So, yun That's po yung... Uh, sir, yun po yung hmm. fair box. That's the fair. Yes, uh -oh. a fair. But what is the actual cost? Meaning, if you add the subsidy uh, to the government. Po, sir. Yeah. sir, um, when we measure po our subsidy level, we make a distinction po between covering yung OPEX, which is yung 1.5 billion po natin, mm -hmm. and covering po yung tinatawag natin na original... Magkano lang ginasa sa 2017 on that? Uh, sir, total po is 2.7, 5.7, 6.1 pesos. 6.1 billion. So if you divide that by how many riders in the year, uh, that will give you the figure, right? Yes, sir. sir actually, oh. I have the revenue figure po for 2017, which is 2.8 billion pesos. So we are looking at the 4 billion peso subsidies. Okay. It says in your presentation you have 6 to 9 trains running. I think you said earlier there are 7 trains running. Pero... Uh, how do we get back to the, the original uh, intention at 20, 20 yung uh, trend na tumatakbo? W when can we expect? When can the public? I think what the public wants to hear is not just bad news. They want to hear good news, eh, di ba? So anong may papangako natin sa publiko? Sir, in the short uh, to medium term po, we can restore additional trains uh, with arrival of the spare parts that we have already ordered. Our target po, uh, based on our operations plan, basta po walang bumagsak na additional na trend, is umakyat po tayo ng 10 trains by the end of February. And after po no Holy Week, uh, three and a half day po natin na maintenance shutdown, back to 15 trains. Pero the long term po talaga na pag-restore ng 20 trains, hindi lang po pag-restore ha, kasi iba po yung availability ng 20 trains, iba po yung dun sa reliability nila, yung hindi po pumapalya habang tumatakbo, kailangan po talaga natin ng general overhaul. And yung general overhaul program po natin with our rehabilitation service provider is a three-year program po that will begin in May of this year. Pero I'd like to get from your office, ha, uh, a report on the electrical upgrade in the 800 million na nabigay kasi bakit yun, yun ang nagiging problema ngayon eh kasi nakita ko the past two days di ba? or kaya tumigil yung ano 
yung pagpapatakbo. Yes, please. Ma'am, um, if I may just quickly comment po on the points raised. Uh, first of all, ma'am, um, I think there is not one public interview that I have given or that the Secretary has given on MRT3 kung saan po hindi kami nagpaumanhin at humingi po ng dispensa. Mahirap po ma'am yung responsibilidad nyo yung ganong karaming tao and sinasight po namin ma'am yung previous uh, experience not because we're blaming but because we're showing the people that we understand the problem. Mahalaga po kasi yun. So nagpaumanhin po kami dyan. Malaking, malaking problema talaga to And alam mo, Yusek Batan, nadadama ko yung iyong malasakit eh. Alam mo si Yusek Batan, galing yan sa nakaraang administrasyon. Kinuha rin yan dahil nakita ang kanyang potensyal dahil dati nandun lang siya sa likod. Hindi, wala naman siyang managerial na or decision ano. But thank you for staying on because we need institutional knowledge. You're not here to be crucified. It's just that people want to know when their lives will be better. Kung umiyak tayo lahat dito, kasi naawa ka rin eh. Yes, ma'am, that's true. Uh, ma'am, if I may comment po, um, the secretary, tuwing napapadaan po yan sa pila ng MRT3, walang palya po, ma'am, tumatawag siya sa akin. Um, asking what's the problem, bakit may pila, bakit kami hindi doon magpadala ng bus, nasa na yung spare parts. Uh, Ma'am, I guess I started the presentation with the context of how big the railways pipeline is of this uh, government. And Ma'am, railways pa lang po yun. Wala pa po yung aviation. How much are we going to spend for 2018 on railways? For 2018, mm -hmm. sir, we are at seven, 70 billion po, including okay. the unprogrammed appropriations. So you have 20 trains at peak hours of 550,000, pero yung actual news is 250,000 passengers per day. Yes. E pag nakompleto lahat ng program nyo, para we have something, para may, ma, may hope na ng tao. After five years, for example, or four years, ilan ng, how, how, by how much can we increase the ridership? Sir, currently po, there are uh, only 10% of commuters daily in Metro Manila that use rail. That translates to 1.1 million passengers. By the end po of our phase one pipeline in 2022, our target is to service with railway services 30% of the ridership that will bring it up po to 3 million passengers a day Pero in Metro sa, Manila. Sa 30% kasi moving target. That's right, sir. Just that's right. Because right. 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 30% of the uh, adjusted. Uh, ating, ano, magaling yan sa mata. <laughs> because uh, the population is growing by, two, by so oh, much. Lips and bounds. So, dapat i-factor in yun sa, ano, diba? Correct. Oh. Sa projection. Ma'am, quickly lang po on the 827 million Asia Field contract. Ma'am, yung capacity expansion project po natin, which includes the Dalian trains, was divided into three. Yung lot one po na tinatawag natin, yan yung 48 Dalian trains. Yung lot two po, yung na-mention, is yung tinatawag natin na ancillary system. And yung lot three po, yan yung tinatawag natin na signaling upgrade. Lahat po nitong lots one, two, and three are necessary po to make the 48 Dalian, uh, 48 trains plus the original fleet operational. So ito pong kontrata ng Asia Phil, what does it involve? It involves po building additional power substations. Kasi pag nagdagdag ka po ng additional na trend, kailangan mo rin po ng additional na kuryente. It involves po uh, laying down new catenaries kasi again, tataas po yung power requirement. Additional po na relays doon sa ating taft para po magkasya yung four-car train. Uh, so lahat po nitong lot 2 na tinatawag natin na kontrata na in po natin noong October 2017 following a competitive bidding are intended po sana doon po sa increase in capacity natin na 72 no, ngayon plus 48. Hindi po siya nakaukol doon sa pagpapabuti ng current na system. Pang-expansion po talaga siya. Okay. Just to clarify that. So, uh, before I close, actually, I'll give you one minute, Buri. You have something to add? Uh, thank you, Madam Senator. Uh, we welcome the opportunity to be present and clarify some of the uh, issues regarding the MRT. Um, Madam Senator, um, the, the uh, good undersecretary began his uh, talk with the implication that part of the problem of the MRT lies in the alleged uh, failure of the former maintenance provider to procure spare parts. And likewise, that 
because of certain short-term maintenance providers that compounded the problem. We respectfully disagree, Madam Senator. The problem of the MRT is systemic because at the time, as we have already presented during the hearing last May 15 before this very same committee, at the time that the trains and trucks were new, there were already glitches even during the tenure of Sumitomo. Okay, no, I, I, tell you, I, I know you have to represent them, but let me ask you, yes, did you really fulfill all of the inventory requirements? I, I think uh, Madam, no. Madam Senator, uh, if I may... Why are they scrambling now to order if those I may, parts? If I may, Madam Senator, yes. uh, it, it's a matter of procedure on the part of, uh, of Buri when it submits the monthly billings, that it, it uh, would likewise submit the invoices of the spare parts that were, that were purchased. Now, we, we purchased spare parts even up to that time, the last billing period being uh, from uh, September 19 to October 18. Even if at that point in time, we have not been paid by, by the DOTR for six successive billing periods, uh, Madam Witness. So, uh, Madam Senator, I'm sorry. Uh, so, we, we actually purchased spare parts and we could not have maintained the, the spare parts uh, could not have maintained the train availability at around 18 uh, trains at peak hours and if we did not purchase the required spare parts, Madam Senator. I, 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 you know what? You have merit to what you're saying because right now it's actually worse. But it could also be the wear and tear of the train and also the lack of parts. But um, this is not... This is really an aid of legislation and also oversight if you'd want to be able to take up um, also whatever... Um, Issues you have that would probably be in the court already uh, at this Madam point. Se Mad Madam Senator, uh, yes. it's precisely because of that that I wish to point out, Madam Senator, that uh, around uh, Jun July of 2007, we have uh, given the uh, uh, 2007, July 7 of 2017, we have submitted to uh, Secretary Tugade a uh, list of the design flaws of the MRT3 system. We, we are of the position that it is systemic because the glitches continue to this very day when it's already... Sir, secured. I think we've established that. Yes, that yes, the problem is systemic. We don't need any more an expert opinion on that. A lot uh, in the past, they've already dropped the ball. When you came in, the problem was already there. Unfortunately, we all have our shortcomings here. And, and now where we need to be is how can we make up for lost time and how we can make it up to our passengers. So just to recap, because now I'm going to close, um, a few of the, the dates that were submitted to us, I think end of March, after the delivery of the other spare parts, we will hopefully have 10 trains that are running. And then after the Holy Week, we will hopefully have 15 trains that are running and then after if Rhineland agrees to have those trains uh, operational then you know we, we can even expect more but definitely the signaling system which is the lot 2 uh, program for the, el uh, the electrical upgrade um, will have to be will have to be also addressed so these are all the things that we need to consider but for now, uh, we would like for the DOTR to upgrade us regularly. If you have any delays, don't wait for a hearing. Give us an advisory because normally people really look to us to make sure that we, we keep you on your, on your toes and your deliverables. Okay. And we appreciate your work. We know that this is public service. This is a, uh, a sacrifice on your part, especially you, uh, Mr. Batan. Um, we need the fixed timetable for the completion of repairs and rehabilitation instead of open-ended assurances and vague promises. You would have been there ready for more than two years. I think um, we can't use anymore the excuse that bago lang kasi kami dito. Now you'd have to be able to offer something in return to our passengers. Uh, we're a bit emotional because we see it every day. Nawawalan tayo ng dalawang oras, tatlong oras, para makasama ang ating pamilya. Lahat naman tayo nagtatrabaho, kaya nga nandito tayo ngayon. 
yung oras na hindi natin nakakasama, yung mga mahal natin sa buhay, hindi naman, it's not so much to ask of the government to make it a little bit, a little bit more convenient for us. Right? So for now, we will adjourn this hearing because we'd like to do a committee report. Thank you for your presence.